Hello, class. In this last set of examples, I'd like to compare methods. So we've been learning how to use dynamics to look at the net forces in the different components, look at the acceleration, and we can go back to kinematic equations to look at velocities. Now using energy, we can use the law of conservation of energy, and we can pull velocities out from there. I'd like to compare these two methods and how they work in a common example. So here's the example. Bank robbers have pushed a thousand kilogram safe to a second story window. They plan to break the window, then lower the safe 300 meters to their truck. Not being too clever, they stack up 500 kilograms of furniture, tie a rope between the safe and furniture, and place a rope over a pulley. Then they push the safe out the window. What is the safe's speed when it hits the truck? The coefficient of kinetic friction here between the furniture and the floor is 0 0.5. In this first example, we'll solve it using Newton's laws and kinematics equations. We've got a sketch of the, the case here where we've got 1,000 kilogram safe and our 500 kilogram counterweight of the furniture. We're told that it's going to drop down 3 meters, so from an initial height or y position to a final height, which we'll call zero, and this one is equal to three meters. We'll define our axes here. This can be our positive x-axis and our positive y-axis. And so the safe is going to accelerate down in this direction and accelerate over in this direction as it goes across that pulley. So let's look at the free body diagrams. The free body diagram for the furniture, over here, we've got a tension that is acting to the right in the positive x direction, a gravity that is acting downward, normal force upward, and this force of friction that they're relying upon to try and slow things down. And we know that we're going to get an acceleration in this direction. For our y components then, we have the normal force the force of gravity, and there's no acceleration in that direction, so that's zero, and, and so our normal force is equal to mg. Along the x-axis, the sum of the x-axis, I've got the tension and the force due to friction. I'm actually going to change this to a k. Change that to a k for kinetic friction because I don't want to confuse it with the subscript f for furniture. And that's my acceleration. It's going to be along the x-axis. That leaves me with a tension then that is the mass of the furniture times its acceleration plus that force due to uh, friction over there. I've brought it over to the other side, mu k mfg. For the safe, I have then the tension acting upwards and I've got the force of gravity acting downwards. This is the force of gravity of the safe, just to distinguish it from the other. And I've got an acceleration that is acting downwards, and it is going to be a negative A based on the axes that I've defined. And so here I have no X components, but I have the Y components, which will be the tension minus the gravity, force of gravity on the safe, and I've got a negative acceleration on that side. I can let these two tensions equal, and so from the other side, I've got the mass of the furniture and acceleration and the force of kinetic friction. And now I have this negative acceleration and the mass, the force of gravity on the safe. And what I'm trying to solve for here is that acceleration. I want to know how fast it's going to accelerate so that I can figure out what its velocity is. And so I'll isolate for the acceleration. I then get this expression and solving, I get a value then of four 0.9 meters per second squared. And so I get a magnitude for my acceleration of 4.9 meters per second squared. Next, let's go on to solve for the velocity then, which is what I'm aiming for. So I've got an initial y position of 3 meters, and I'm going to fall to a final position of 0. This is again my positive y in this direction and positive x in this direction. And I know now that I'm accelerating downwards at a negative 4.9 meters per second squared. I start off with a velocity equal to zero 
and I want to find that final velocity. So very simple kinematic equation that we recall. And so using this equation, I know that I'm going to set my vi is equal to zero. It's starting off with an initial velocity of zero. And my final position is also zero. And so solving for my final velocity then, I have a plus or minus the square root of 29.4 meters squared per second squared. In other words, plus or minus 5.4 meters per second. So which one do I want, the plus or the minus? Let's think about our y versus t plot. We're starting out with some position up here at 3 meters. We have a zero slope because we have a zero velocity. And we're going to accelerate downwards. And so we're going to have a quadratic. And down here, when we hit that final um, y equal to zero position, notice we have a negative slope, right? So it's a negative velocity. And the positive velocity would be the mathematical solution over here at a negative time. And so the one that I actually want here is a negative 5.4 meters per second. So that's how we'd solve it using Newton's laws and the kinematics equations that we learned weeks ago. Now let's look at the example using work and conservation of energy. I've redrawn the free body diagrams here to help us out. We're interested in the total work being done and how that changes then the kinetic energy. One of the things we need for looking at work is we need to know our displacement vector. And so we've got a displacement that is acting like this, a delta d, I'll call it. And over here, we've got that delta d acting like this, downward. So that's our delta d. We'll notice then that the normal force is at a right angle, and the force of gravity here for the furniture is at a right angle. And so the work due to from the normal force is going to be equal to zero, and the work due to gravity on the furniture is going to be equal to zero. We also then at the same time here, we know that the phi for the tension is going to be equal to zero, and the phi for the kinetic friction is going to be equal to 180 degrees. On the right, phi for the gravity is going to be equal to zero, and phi for the tension, in this case, is going to be equal to 180 degrees. So let's look at the total work then. We now have the work due to the kinetic friction over here. That is the work due to kinetic friction, the delta d, and a cos of phi k, as I've called it, which is the cos of 180 degrees. And that's what we should always be expecting for kinetic friction. And so it's going to give us a negative fk delta d. I also know from earlier that this force of gravity is a negative mg, and this normal force is equal to our force of gravity, which I found earlier. So I'm carrying that over from before. That gives me then a negative mu k mg times delta d. Let's look at the work due to tension here. And this is just a t delta d times the cos of zero, in this case over here. But at the same time, let's go look at it for the safe. For the, uh, safe. So I'll call this the work of the tension on the furniture and the work of the tension on the safe. But now I've got a T delta D of cos of 180 degrees. And so you'll notice that these two are the opposite and will end up canceling each other out. Lastly, I'm going to look at the force due to gravity acting on this safe. I've got the force of gravity downwards. I've got a displacement delta D. And I've got a cos of what I've called phi G. And that is a cos of zero in this case. And so I'm left with just Fg delta D, or the mass of the safe times G times delta D. So I've distinguished the mass of the safe here. In the end, I want to look at the total work. And so this is going to be the work due to the kinetic friction, the work of that tension on the furniture and on the safe. And we're looking at the whole system and the work of gravity. As I pointed out earlier, these two are going to cancel each other.
after I plug in all those numbers, I get then a negative, negative 7,350 joules due to the work of the friction, plus a positive 29,400 joules due to gravity. That gives me a final value of 22,000, a positive 22,050 joules. Let me just check my units on the right. I've got a mass times an acceleration times a distance. I can recognize this as mass times acceleration is uh, newtons times my meters. So force times distance is going to give me a joule. And my last step is to recognize that that total work that I have is what gives me my change in kinetic energy. And my initial velocity was zero, so I'm just trying to solve for my final velocity. And so I want to solve for my final velocity. I've just isolated for velocity here. I've taken my total work and I've divided by the total mass. I have to recognize then if I'm looking at the total kinetic energy or the change in the total kinetic energy, it applies for both of the masses together or the whole system together. And so I'm dividing by that total mass on the bottom. I could write these out separate. That would be fine too when I solve for it over here. So I'm dividing by the mass of the total system and that leaves me then with a final velocity of plus or minus 5.4 meters per second. And in this case, the conservation of energy doesn't tell me which one I want. It all depends on how I've defined my axes. And if I want to define this as my positive y, then I would want the positive velocity if I've defined it the other way around. And if I defined it the other way around, that this was my positive y, then I'd be looking at the negative velocity as the correct answer. And so you'll see two methods give me the same answer. And I'm really doing it much equivalent because you'll recognize, hopefully, that built into that kinetic energy is really a kinematics equation. But they're equivalent, as I showed in the earlier videos, that we can derive one from the other. And so they both give us the same solution. And you can take whatever approach you want when you're solving these problems. So as I showed earlier, these methods really are equivalent because if I rearrange that equation and then I insert my masses, I'm now just looking at the change in kinetic energy is equal to the total work done, or that is my net force or my that gives me my net acceleration or my total acceleration. So the methods are equivalent. Our approach is a little bit different and the things that we need to pull out are a little bit different. In one case, we keep careful track of the directions and in the other, for work, we keep track of the relative directions of force compared to the displacement from that force. And you can use whatever method you prefer in solving problems, whether it's conservation of energy or looking at kinematics and dynamics.